Now it's time for us to introduce to you today's game changer. She is a cricket nut. I tell you, let's start off with that. And she is Cricket South Africa's a media person, the go-to person to chat anything and everything to do with cricket, including the Cricket Proteus men's team and the women's team. Let's now welcome into our lounge, none other than Loratu Malagutu. Thank you very much. Hello, welcome to hello, the Ladies hello. Club. Good morning, morning. Thank you very much for having me. It must be exciting to have you here. Valen, you want to take it first? I'm so glad to have you here because you've been with, uh, I mean, you pretty much followed the same journey that uh, Lebo and I would have to get into communications and that is studying communications and getting a degree in journalism and then actually landing a role with Cricket South Africa. So just tell us how it all began to where you were able to get to where you are now as being the media officer for the Proteas. Yeah, I think it's, I'm pretty fortunate every day to sort of live my dream job. Like you said, I was a cricket nut growing up. I was just really crazy about the sports. I used to go and watch whenever I could. And I used to learn off from my brother who used to play as well. So I decided that I wanted to be a cricket journalist. So after matric, I went and studied journalism at the University of Johannesburg. And I also had a good mentor in Kaz Naidu. She was also, you know, breaking that mm -hmm. broadcasting, commentating space as well. And she was also somebody that I really looked up to. So. She was with me along the way and she had a post at Cricket South Africa and she said, well, you know, you've just graduated. Would you, would you not like to come to, you know, just get some work experience? Yeah. And then I went there and I started as an intern, like you say. And then um, from then on, I guess things just sort of progressed. And before I knew it, I was yeah, doing my dream job as a, a team's media manager. Yeah. Now, not everybody gets an opportunity to say, OK, when I grow up, I, I want to be in this space, but you literally had the opportunity presented to you from graduating. You, were in, you went straight to do an internship at Cricket South Africa, um, and you didn't even go via the Vibas. You went straight to the dream job. The dream job presented itself. How has that been in terms of the growth to where you are now? Yeah, it's been a daunting sort of journey, to be honest with you. Like you said, you're coming into this male-dominated environment. You're young. I mean, I was fresh out of sure. varsity. And you sort of have all these, this expectation and all these eyes on you. And, and to really just take your dream job and to make it a success is, you know, people, people can give you the opportunity, mm. but it's still up to you to take that opportunity and to still make it a success. So I think I was really fortunate to having, like, good mentors and, and good support around me and my family as well. I mean, you know, as a young black female, it's coming in wanting to be a cricket journalist is not, you know, it's yeah. not the, it's the like, usual. It's like, why would you want to do that? Yes. Everybody says that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, my family was so good. They were just, they supported me all the way. And, and I think also hard work. If you're passionate about something, sure. it's, it's so easy. I mean, the, the hours are crazy, you know. You know, in the sports field, it's not nine to five. No. It's 24-7. <laughs> and having that passion just sort of like pushed me through and I mean here I am I think it's, it's seven years later and I, I can't believe it it feels like yesterday. Sure. Can you take us back to that moment when they said we want you to be the media officer for the Proteas? I can oh my word mm -hmm. I, it was you see it was daunting and I think I had Gerald Majola back then and Kaz who, who came who sort of sat me in the office I actually remember the day as if it was yesterday and they said well this opportunity has come up and it's going to be a first thing. I mean, there's been a woman, but you'll be the first black female to be part, to be in this role. And I was, you know, you know, when you're just like, oh my word, is this really happening? But then also sometimes fear sets in and you think, yeah. oh my word, am I going to be able to do this job? Because all these people are backing you. They expect you to, to, to succeed. Deliver. Yeah. <laughs> and now you really have to. So I had mixed emotions, but yeah, I got over it. And, and the good thing was the guys were also really welcoming. They made me feel so comfortable. I mean, I remember Graham Smith, I mean, he'd been captain for so many years and for me to come into the space and for him to accept me and, yeah. you know, also teach me how things work in the change room and all of that, that really oh. helped a lot, yeah. Now, you started at, someone wasn't well, resigned in development and then someone resigned in terms of uh, Cricket South Africa for the Proteas and you stepped in into both roles. Um, very young then, and I'm pretty sure that Given that opportunity, you thought, wait, young 20s, black woman, can I do this? Yeah, every day. And I think doubt is natural, I guess, in any environment or, or a working environment you have. But yeah. I, I did have a lot of doubts. But I also, I, I knew that I, I knew the game. You know, I, 
I'd studied it. I mean, actually help work starting with cricket development helped me to sort of get to know from grassroots, yeah. you know, what's happening with the game development mm. wise. What's, you know, there's a lot that's happening with the game and then managing to go up that level to the approaches, you sort of knew, okay, I've got this good solid base and now this is the, you know, the big league. And mm. I, th I think that also helped me in terms of confidence and, and being able to pull the job off. Sure. <laughs> Part of the job is organizing press conferences. It's uh, hearing from people like Lebo and myself saying, can we please get yeah. an interview yeah, yeah. with Kakiso Robada, please? Yeah. You know, and it, has to now. And it must happen right here, right now. And that's a lot of pressure to have to deal with the fourth estate, not only here in South Africa, but also abroad. It's, it's, a, it's incredibly different, difficult and it's also you have to manage the relationships with players. You know, some of them have been burned by the press and, you know, have sort of a negative, you know, feeling towards them. And, but you're thinking, no, but we need to push your profile. We need to push, take cricket to everybody. So it's, it's difficult. It's also, like you say, it's 24 seven. Like, you know, you'll sometimes get people calling you from Australia and you're thinking, what, who is this? And, you know, so you sort of have to be on your toes, but, um, I've, it's sort of been great to see the, the new sort of crop of journalists, cricket journalists in mm. South Africa as well. And it's been refreshing, I must say, to work with some of the younger guys, you know. So that also has helped um, in my industry in terms of now you sort of have people that you sort of relate to. I don't know sure, if that makes sure. sense. So, yeah. Uh, tell me what has been some of the, the most challenges that you've experienced as a cricket South Africa, the Proteus uh, media person? Um, sure. I think when I started, I was also very young. Mm. And like you said, black female, when you go to your Englands and your Australias and your Indias, where predominantly, I mean, even in India, they still say hi, sir, in an email, you know, just... But they know you're, yeah. you're not a sir. <laughs> but, you know, you just, you get that you know, ignorance, I suppose. But having to, to show, you know, the people that you work with abroad, you know, that wouldn't really know your background or know much about you, you know, that actually I've earned my stripes and I know what I'm doing and I've, you know, I'm doing a good job and to just gain that respect, that was probably the most difficult part. But I think afterwards, as the years went by, I got a sort of good understanding with everybody and, you know, it's, 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 it's become good. It's, it's a great working environment. She is the Proteus Media Officer and she'll, she's definitely a trailblazer, a game changer all in one because she's done what really no other black woman in this fraternity has done and you continue to really break the ceilings, I suppose. Yeah, the ceilings don't ever stop. Yeah. Really. I think, you know, for, for young women in the Shiva industry, especially the male-dominated ones, it's, it's important to, to really just push on. You'll, there'll be many detractors, there'll be people doubting you, but I think if you follow that passion and you don't give up, um, that's, that's the only way to success, really. How do you overcome those things? The perceptions mm. about you when you walk into a room and you haven't even opened your mouth, the fear mm. of can I really do this, the doubts that you've spoken about? Yeah, I think over the years you sort of learn to craft the trade. I mean, I think if, if you know your sports, if you know the job, if you know what's required and, and, and sort of how to do the job efficiently, yeah. you know, it's very, people can't tell you anything if you, like you say you walk into a boardroom or you walk into a press conference. And, if you sort of have that behind you, it makes it a lot easier to, to really just be confident in the job that you do and also to, to stand up to any of those people that you know, might come with their stereotypes and so forth. Now, you did mention that Australia and England are, are also a little bit a pre, like taken aback that there's a woman uh, media officer. Tell me about the relationship with the players when they first, first got to meet and know that, okay, this is our new go-to media person. How, how were you received in the team? Yeah, that was also very daunting. I also remember that day. Like, really? you know, like <laughs> very vivid. Um, I think like with anything, change is always difficult. And, True. you know, you had a lot of guys, you know, Graham Smith, Jacques Cullis, Mark Boucher, who had been in the setup for a long time. So, you know, in the beginning, it was a little bit, you know, tricky. But I think, you know, over the months, you know, they sort of, gained the relationship with me and they, you know, they saw that, okay, this woman actually knows what she's talking about mm. and, you know, she, she, she knows the cricket and, um, yeah, then they just sort of learned to accept me after that and now it's just one big family. <laughs> <laughs> the heartbreak of the World Cup and what that was like. I've had two World Cup heartbreaks, believe it or not. Sure. Um, because in 2011, it was also one of those in India, they, um, mm. um, 
it was a tough one as well. I mean, against uh, New Zealand, everybody sort of thought we were going to. But yeah, 2015, that has been, that's been the toughest sort of environment sure. that you have had to walk in. I mean, I remember I had to take A.B. to his press conference and I was like, oh, I really don't want him to. But, you know, he has to. And you can just see his face, mm. his, his eyes. Like, you know, the, all the guys were just so emotional. That was... Yeah, it was a, it was really? a, just tough. Yeah, it's just tough. So I think you know, in two years' time, we really need to just break that voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, obviously, now you have to deal with a lot of media, a lot of questions, and then when when a big story comes to say comes up and and it says we are no longer going on with the global T20 league, um, wouldn't that be a media nightmare for you? How did you handle it? Also, I know you're working with a lot of global agencies as well. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, it was tricky. I mean, there was so much excitement and, you know, everybody, not just in South Africa, but worldwide, was really looking forward to the tournament. So, you know, when that decision was made, you sort of knew that, okay, we have to sort of just crisis manage it. Mm. I think, you know, communication was important. Um, I think from the league point of view, I mean, they were working with all the owners, they had the meeting, so they were able to sort of communicate. And, I mean, from the players' point of view as well, you know, the guys... They, were, they expressed their, their disappointment. I mean, I think it's natural. And I mean, a lot of guys had pinned a lot of hopes on True. it. So, you know, the guys will be naturally disappointed. But I think, you know, they've done well. You know, we've moved on. There's the Ram Slam going on now. And yeah. we can only just hope that next year we'll have a bigger and better league in place. Uh, as we speak about some of the challenges that come with the, with the job and how to crisis manage, I imagine in my head you walking on a tightrope and trying to balance so many people's interests. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's quite a good analogy for the requirements of the job? You've got it spot on. It is a, it is a balancing act because, you know, there's so many people that you have to please. You've got your players, you've got your media, you've got your sponsors, you've even got Cricket South Africa, you know, and everything sort of works in, is in one environment, but everybody sort of has to work together and mm. sort of find that equilibrium. I think that for me, that's probably the most challenging part of the job is, is being able to, to manage expectations. And, you know, sometimes guys are also just human beings as sure. well. And sometimes, you know, there's a, maybe the media doesn't always understand that and it's not always easy to, you know, you want, you want guys to be out there and you want cricket to get a profile, but the guys are also, you know, you have to manage their relationship and manage how they're doing sort of in their off time. Sounds like a big sister, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with all the youngsters coming in, I feel like one now. Really? <laughs> let's, let's now talk a little bit about you in terms of your passion for sport um, and where it comes from. Have you always been interested in sport? Uh, I see you on your Twitter handle, you, you're very vocal about sports. Uh, so where does that passion come from? Has it always been there? Did you want to play or you yeah. just wanted to be in the space? Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I played a lot when I was at school. You know, I was a hockey girl like you. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and cricket I also played and netball. So I've always just enjoyed sports. But I think, you know, growing up in South Africa, we're such a sports crazy country, sure. you know. You always remember the Rugby World Cups and how 2010 soccer. Yeah. It's just, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's just something about sports. It's, 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 it's um, not so unpredictable sure. and it's passion and it's love and it's, yeah. So I, I don't know, but I, I love my sports, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the passion doesn't only lie just with cricket alone. Yeah. Your heart is, uh, is balanced between a, a lot of other sports. So then having achieved so much already in cricket in South Africa, where's the next step for you? That's a very good question, Valen. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about brands and, and seeing brands grow. I mean, I think proches are a brand on its own. And mm. I mean, I think if I had an opportunity even, you know, overseas to work with other brands, sporting brands more specifically, and, you know, around the comms and the PR and the brand sort of elements, that's, that's an area that I'm very interested in. But the moment my heart is with the proches and, yeah... I'm really enjoying it. I can't believe it's been seven years. I was going to say, now seven years, uh, and where to from here? I mean, obviously, you want to grow, you want to move on. Would you be looking at perhaps in two years' time an international association um, comes and ropes you in and you move abroad? Is that, is that maybe the line you perhaps want to go? In an ideal world, I mean, when I was 15, I said, oh, this is going to be my dream job. So now, you know, you sort of get your dream job. And then what? And yeah. now you're thinking, okay, so 
what am I going to do now? Yeah. I can't, you know, sort of have to put together another dream job. But I mean, I sort of realized that all that I've got and, you know, the things I'm passionate about and sort of my strengths mm. and, and those, those elements. So I think I, it will be about harnessing and just, you know, putting them all together and hopefully finding another dream job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is your greatest strength? I think my greatest strength is, is um, that's a very good question. I'd say um, opportunity, realizing opportunity. I think, you know, when you work with young cricketers who are coming in, you know, they sort of trying to build their, their profile and build their brands. I think I'm really, really interested in building brands and help seeing people grow and that, that sort of space. But I think I need to give that question a little bit more thought. I've never <laughs> been asked that before. Wow. I, I, think it's, I think it's also maybe just testament to your humble nature. You probably don't like patting yourself on the back too much. And yeah. I think that's a problem with all of it. Yeah. Now, who are you? Who is Lerato outside of Cricket South Africa? Sure. Oh, Lerato is very relaxed. I'm all about family. I think yeah. I've got two nephews who I hardly see grow up. I really love spending time with the family and you know, just being back home with the parents. I mean, you, you realize that they're getting older mm. and, you know, so I'm very relaxed. I'm not, I'm, all, I'm not really like, you know, out there, out there, out there. I like to, to be at home and, you know, adventure stuff as well, which is... Really? Mm. What kind of adventure like stuff? Like mountain biking. I mm. love running as well. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I, I saw you. Yeah. Didn't you just do the Soweto Marathon? Uh, well, I was supposed to, but uh, I didn't. I, I, yeah, the training didn't really go really? too well. Yeah, But oh. we, I love running, yeah. So the next one is, yeah, in the race in Jan that we want to do. So yeah. we've got a running club in the team. So that okay. definitely helps to keep oh, you wow. fit and, yeah. So, so, so who's who's leading the pack then uh, in this in this protest running no, club? We, we want moment. to know. Don't yeah, who is Our physio actually, he's done twenty seven comrades. Oh, okay. He can barely walk now. He's knee, but he still goes on. He's sure. it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, he's yeah. So he pushes us a lot, gets us <laughs> up in the mornings to go run. So that's good. She was, so you've got a running club in the Proteus team. You've also got a football team because I've seen the guys warm up playing a game of soccer and they are pretty good. And Have you ever tried? They take it very seriously as well. <laughs> it's more than the cricket. They'd rather play the football than the cricket. But no, no, I haven't tried. I think I'll keep those skills to myself. Uh, your final message to young women? I think let's embrace each other. I mean, mm. I, I think there's... There, we're getting so many more opportunities sure. to prove ourselves and to prove our worth and let's let's help each other. I mean, it's, it's awesome to sit here with you guys and to be able to talk about, you know, the same industry challenges and just opportunities and, you know, all the things that we could all struggle with. And knowing that you relate also just helps me a lot. So, I mean, let's support each other and let's grow together because, I mean, really, there's only, there's so many of us That's phenomenal true. women, like you say. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I mean, um, it's great to speak to someone whose highlight is her job. Yeah. And that is Lerato Malikutu. She is the cricket media person for the Pro Tears. What a phenomenal woman in sports she is. She still has plenty to give and to share when it comes to her knowledge and her passion for cricket in the country. In the next 10 years, she's going to be on that seat as a game changer. And this is just going to be one part, one chapter of the stories, what she's done with the Proteus.